What's up guys? Hey there. My name is Calvin from move.studio and today I'm going to show you how to set up this really cool surface extrusion effect that I recently used in one of my projects to create this kind of or scale, dragon scale, monster-ish sort of um, yeah, effect on the surface of a McLaren. So first of all, what we're going to do is just select everything and remove it. We're going to create a plane, which we're going to call Geo Nodes. And we're going to create a second plane, which we're going to call Floor. Now, what we're going to do is go into the edit mode with our floor selected. We're going to right click and subdivide a few times. What we're also going to do is just scale this up a bit. Okay. So with geometry nodes selected, we're going to create or open up a new window, uh, which we're going to change to the geometry node editor. I'm just going to press N to get rid of this window on the side. I'm going to scale that up a bit. And then with that geometry node plane selected, we're just going to click new, which will create a new uh, geometry node setup. So we're going to drag and drop the floor into our um, geometry nodes and plug in the geometry. Um, and now we can see that our uh, geometry nodes is now this plane. So what we can do is actually just hide the floor for now. And you'll be able to see that we still see this floor. So what I want to do is, well, first of all, this, this um, effect consists of a few different setups. First, what we use is a geometry um, as a proximity mesh. So in our case, we could be using a sphere, for example. And then depending on how close that sphere is to our mesh, we then want this extrusion effect to take place um, in proximity to our proximity mesh. So we're just going to call this a proximity sphere. And because we can't really see through the sphere, we're going to actually go into the object properties, change the viewport display, and change display as to wire. Right. Okay. So we are going to go back to the geometry nodes. And now let's dive into this. First, we want to extrude our mesh using our proximity mesh. So to do that, we are going to drag the proximity mesh, oops, sorry, left click, drag into here, and then we're going to use the position of the vertex of the floor. So we're going to use position, and we're then going to um, basically check the distance between the position of the vertices and the location of our object. I hope that's correct, but. Um, in practicality, that's basically what's happening. Um, to be completely honest, I'm not too, you know, hardcore technical on what all of these nodes are doing. I do understand the concept and how everything works, but uh, yeah, I might be a little bit wrong with what exactly is happening in the background. But anyway, it is going to work nonetheless. So we're going to go ahead and get a vector math, sorry, vector math, voila. Going to plug the position into the top, get the location into the bottom, and then we're going to change this to distance. I'm just going to press D on, uh, on my keyboard and that did not get me the result I wanted. So let's just do a quick check. There it is at the bottom, distance. Okay. Now, with that done, what we're going to do is get a delete geometry, plug that value into um, the selection. Then we're going to get our geometry, plug that into the top, and then plug the geometry into geometry. Now, that didn't quite work work and the reason for that is because we need to uh, specify um, what should be removed because we still actually haven't done that correctly so what we're going to do is get a math and then we're going to set this to greater than um, which again I can't really find I'm just going to press G in this case that does work um, and then we're going to take the distance plug that into the top plug the value into the selection and there we go so now you can see something happening um, so what we're going to do is just increase the threshold and you can see it's now scaling. Okay. So while that's nice, um, what I want to do is actually use the scale of the sphere of this proximity mesh um, to drive that threshold. So we're going to go into the proximity mesh object info, grab the scale and use that as a threshold. So now when I scale the sphere, that also scales 
the deletion of these um, faces. Okay, so we're almost halfway there already. Um, what we're going to do next is use. Um, let me have a quick think. Let's start with the uh, with the extrusion. So after the deletion of the geometry, um, let's actually just frame this real quick. Frame. Move these three into there. Uh, we're just going to press N. Delete faces. I'm going to color it just to organize everything a bit. Okay, so this is the delete faces section. Um, next, we're going to extrude. We're going to use an extrude mesh node for that. And um, there you go. Now we can see everything is being extruded. Um, but I don't really want that. I want um, I want that to be somewhat of a uh, of a curve. Uh, so the center I want to have extruded to the max, and then on the sides I want it to be basically zero because I want it to go flush with the original floor. Um, so what we're going to do to do that is use a um, geometry proximity node. So geometry proximity, there it is. And um, we're going to grab the geometry, plug that into the target, and then we're going to use a map range. I'm going to put the position, actually, no, not the position. We're going to use the distance. So the distance of the, um, where are we? So I'm getting a bit lost here. So geometry goes into the geometry proximity. Then it's checking the faces. Got the map range here. And then we're going to plug that into the... Uh, let me have a quick think. Offset scale. Yes. Okay. Now, you can see that this is sort of working. Um, now, if we play with these values, you can see that something is happening. But, uh, yeah, it's not quite right yet. Um, so, first, what we're going to do is make sure that the object info is set to relative. There we go. And then that already looks a lot better. Um, let me just grab the floor. Um, we're also going to apply a different material to this extruded part. Um, just so we can see it a bit better. Um, now we don't have a material yet, so let's create a new material by using the shader editor. We're going to call this gold. Um, we're going to get the base color, make it somewhat of an orange metallic, and um, that should be enough. Okay. So, um, if we go to this preview render. Okay, that looks all right. Metallic, roughness down. Yeah, that'll do. So, um, let's move on. Okay, so, we're checking the position, checking it with the location of the sphere, which is then calculating the distance of the sphere. If it is, um, if the position is greater than the size of the sphere, we then remove these faces, right? So that works. Then, we're checking the geometry, looking at the faces, and then uh, we're checking the distance of these faces to the range we're setting. Um, at least I believe that's something like that, what's happening. Uh, anyway, the values we're going to be using is minus 0 0.1 all the way up to 1, then 0 to 0 0.5. Hmm almost so this is where you want to be playing around a bit with these values um now one thing i de what did i do oh yeah one thing we definitely want to do is change it from linear to smooth um and then what we also want to do is um first of all move the two men down to like 0 0.01. Is it that one? Yeah, just so it's below the floor. And then we can just 
play around with these values a bit. Okay, so that's getting us somewhere already. Now the next thing we're going to do is um, taper these faces. Because if we look from the top, you can't really see anything happening, only from the sides. Um, so to really give this um, a really clear visual that we are extruding and you know there's something happening, what I'm going to do is use a scale elements node. Um, and what this does is it will then look at the top of our extruded um, faces, which is our selection, and then we can taper them down. Okay, so the bottom stays the same scale, but only the top parts are scaled down. Um, I'm just going to use 0 0.7. 0 0.7, there we go. Um, and that's already looking pretty good. So now when we move our um, proximity mesh around, we get the effect that we want. Now there's one more thing that you can do. Um, so for example, the McLaren vehicle that I used in my animation, um, it was triangulated. Um, and that works, but what I did instead, because I didn't actually want to have triangles, I used a node called dual mesh. And in this case, it doesn't really do much because um, it basically looks at what does it do? It looks at the vertices and creates a face where there's a vertex. Um, so it basically get, gets rid of triangles. Uh, let me see if there's like a triangulate. Yeah, there is. Okay, there we go. So this is what it would have looked like um, with triangles, but the dual mesh makes it look like this uh, it gives you like hexagons which honestly i think looks really nice um, and this is what i used so let's quickly clean up this whole uh yeah no tree a bit all right and i think I think that should be enough. Okay, so we have this node tree ready to go. And now what we can do is just swap out these geometries. So let's apply this effect to our Suzanne. Scale it up. And if we go ahead and apply it the way it is right now, you're gonna see somewhat of an issue. First, we need to make sure that we apply the scale to our mesh, our Suzanne monkey head. Uh, then we're going to change the input mesh from floor to Suzanne. So if we move our um, proximity mesh, you can see it works. Now in this case, it looks almost like crystals, um, which could be the result you want. Um, for me, it's a bit too big, to be honest. And the reason for that is because what we're doing is we're extruding the polygons, right? So if you want to have smaller, uh, smaller faces, smaller extruded parts, you need to have smaller polygons as an input. So what we're going to do is select Suzanne, um, right click, subdivide, that might be one option. Um, but I think in your case, uh, or in most cases, you'll actually want to smooth the geometry. Um, so we're going to go and add a subdivision surface modifier. We're going to have two subdivisions and we're going to apply that and we're going to shade smooth. Now, something worth noting as well is if we get rid of these two um, mesh conversions, you can see this looks a bit weird. And the reason for that is because of the normals. Uh, if we shade flat again, you can see it looks good, but our geometry doesn't look good, right? We've got this flat shading. It's just not very pretty. Um, so if we go back to shade smooth, that is the issue here. Um, so that is also where a dual mesh can be really helpful because it just fixes this. Um, and, uh, yeah, just something worth noting. And, um, yeah, that is how I created this surface extruded, uh, Jesus, surface extrusion effect. And again, you can always play around with the extrusion amount, with the scale, how much it comes out, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. When it starts, where it ends, etc.
So I hope that this was helpful. Make sure to link me on any social media if you do end up using this. I'd love to see your results and I hope you have a great day. Take care, guys.